Yeah. You know, just have oh, it's a tight house. Yeah, it is. Um, but just education. So I don't know how many of you out there watching this video know what a blower door is or what a blower door test, how that looks, what a score is. And I don't really know a whole lot either other than the, you know, the conceptual nature of it. But I got Randy here. Randy, you're from Minnesota. I, am. I actually followed Randy on Instagram where he was building a barn dominium and did a pretty bang up job. I seen his uh, blower door test, which I don't really know exactly. And maybe you can talk about it, but it was stupid low. And I'm like... Actually, over here we got Dan, and Dan is from Rockwell. He is the one that hooked all this up, got Randy down here, and he's gonna do a blower door test on the Barn Dominium that you guys have been watching us build for a year, and we're gonna find out just how efficient or how much air leakage this thing has. Right, right. What the, what the blower door test is gonna do is if we're gonna be testing the integrity of your air control layer, which your main air control layer is your weather logic on the exterior, it's taped. Right. Um, but you've also got closed cell spray foam on the inside of that that's also acting as an air control layer. Um, you've got that through the lid. Mm -hmm. So I'm expecting something very tight. Okay. And of course, I hope it's tight, but at the same time, you know, um, it is what it is. This is going to be a learning experience mm -hmm. for me. And I think for a lot of you, because that has been the major question is, I get all the time, is post frame efficient? Can you build an efficient home with a post frame? Because it has kind of a negative, you know, a appeal to it. People think it's kind of, backdated and, and you know not really going to be efficient but i think they're really efficient buildings the, the nice thing about this one is how simple it is yeah it, it, it like you said square um with a roof over it it's it's there's nothing to them to build it, it's part of my job is to measure volume for in here to do that on this it took me two minutes compared yeah. to some of the houses where I've, I've had half days where i'm measuring volume just just so i can do a calculation be, before i run the blower door simple yeah. this is so stick around, guys, because we will be sharing with you how this thing scored out, maybe uh, give you a little bit of information. Randy's going to take us through the process. You're going to show us what you do to set up. Yep, we will. And then we'll do the test, and hopefully we'll find some leaks. I'm sure we will. I'm sure. And how we're going to fix them, and uh, then we'll come out with the test and see how this thing performs. So one of the processes we want to do is we're, we're going to make sure that we don't have anything that's uh, cold right now. Um, in, in the wall before we do the test. Because once I do the test, if it was existing, I'm not gonna be able to tell. Okay. So we're, we're gonna take the camera and we're just gonna kinda look around to see if there's... Looks I mean, pretty uniform. It looks very uniform. Um, yeah, I don't think we're gonna find much, but we're gonna do the whole house just to make sure that there's no, no issues to begin with. And okay, then, and which we'll maybe typically would be like a missing insulation spot. Correct. Somebody forgot to insulate a bay in the wall. Exactly, or maybe it's windy outside and we do have a little bit of an air leak and that wind happens to be okay. big. And we've got a great temperature differential today. It's what, yeah. 30 outside? Yeah, 33 it's, degrees, a little bit windy. So it, thermal imaging is gonna work great. So Pascal's is a measurement of pressure? It is. Um, some people are familiar with inches of water column. Yep. So uh, 50 pascals is 0.2 inches of water column. So if you think of sucking on a straw and you suck up a quarter inch, that's actually the pressure we're putting on the house. It's not much. Oh, wow. What that, was the reason? Why did they even start? Um, because they wanted to, well, actually, was a lot of the energy crisis in like the 70s? Yep, it did. And people were, really didn't have a good understanding of why buildings performed the way they did. And it turns out air leakage has a lot to do with yeah. the problems that we have, especially once we started adding insulation. Yeah. You know. Hmm. Yeah, I was always under the impression, and correct me if I'm wrong, that a house perfectly air leakage free would be better than a heavily insulated leaky leaky building. Yes. From a, an energy efficiency standpoint. Um, in a way, it depends on your climate. Okay. You know, you get in my climate where we're, you know, I've seen minus 50 below, mm -hmm. you know, actual air temperatures. And when you get that kind of a temperature differential uh, between inside and outside, Air tightness is important, but then you need that insulation yeah, okay. as well. So um, I always take it back to because I was like a, a post frame builder like from the beginning. Yeah. And in our area, nobody house wrapped, nobody did anything. They mm -hmm. just put fiberglass in the walls and said that was good. Yep. And the air leakage was horrible because mm -hmm. we're in the wind. There's no mm -hmm. good air seal. But all the all that we did was just added um, house wrap. Right. And our clients went from like this is the best thing ever just by doing house wrap. Exactly. And uh, what. You know, originally post and frame structures were what? Egg buildings, right? Yeah. And uh, who cared if they were leaky back then? Matter of yeah. fact, you might be putting stuff in there that maybe was wet. You know, you want equipment, it to leak. You want it to leak, you want it to dry. Um, and of course, now we're seeing these move more into residential construction, which is, yep. it's nice to 
um, make them more comfortable and more energy efficient. One thing that we want to make sure that before we do a blower door test that we're shutting any equipment off that might be moving air. So we have a forced air furnace behind us. We have this uh, uh, ERV system. They need to be off. And so I remember to turn them back on. My keys are staying here until we're done with the test. Then we'll come back and turn everything back on and then I can leave. Do we have an exhaust fan going someplace anywhere? We should go check those. There's bath fans you said are, we want to make sure. We're showing that we're, we've got a negative pressure of about 13 pascals right now, which seems. I mean, the door could be open. Could be. It could, it could be a number of things. So we're, we're going to run around and make sure everything is off. Um, all the doors need to be open. We need communication, except for the garage. We're going to close mm -hmm. the garage door off. Yep. Um, we want to make sure that the, the furnace, that the boiler is off, the upstairs furnace is already disabled, the air exchanger is off. Um, we'll start with that. And okay. Oh, he said the exhaust fan was on. Oh, the exhaust fan was yeah. on. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the bathroom exhaust fan was on. Okay. Yeah, I just shut it off. Um, we're still a little bit, I mean, th this could be normal if we've got a little bit of a wind, which we got a little bit of a breeze. Oh, yeah, there. I think it's like 10 to 20 today. Okay, so we're, we're probably... Okay. Well, your bath fan works. Yeah, <laughs> yes. We're going to set a baseline. Um, Do you want to seal off the garage first? Yeah, go ahead and seal the garage up. Okay. That's uh, going to look really cool once the blower door kicks in. <laughs> it's going to look like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man or something. Oh, this no. is a big billow. Well, okay, like so what this test wall. is going to do is it's going to start off at a little bit higher test pressure at 60 pascals, and it's going to take a bunch of samples at that pressure once it gets stabilized. And then it's going to move down to 48 pascals. It's going to take a bunch more. It's going to work its way down to 18 pascals or something like that. So it's a series of tests that it gets. It's going to give me the most data, and it's also going to give us a sense of reliability with the numbers. We're, we're going to be confident that these are going to be correct as long as it's able to accurately... Uh, Take the test pressures at that. We're on the B ring, so I just have to key that in, and we're ready to go. Yeah. You know, just uh, oh, it's a tight house. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, but just education on the, the entire system. So. I'm intrigued. This is pretty cool. Well, it's. It's usually way easier. Usually the computer will do it all by Just itself. Just turn it on and it goes. Yep, but when you get into, uh, we've got the, enough volume in this place and it's tight enough. It just, it, it ramps up too fast. Okay. So now you're going down? We're gonna go down to 48. And this is again called a multi-point test. Um, some people don't really worry about doing a multi-point. You can do a single point where we just bring it up to 50 pascals. It gives us our number and then we can do our math from there manually. Um, but like, again, I like to have the little extra data. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. And eventually we're going to have to get a smaller ring. Okay. So, Small is good. Yeah. So this will be our next one. No, not that one. So what you're doing so, then basically is it's at different Pascal ratings, it's measuring the CFM, and that's what we're charting with those red dots. Exactly. Okay. Look at what it's doing to our, uh, this is our garage door that we sealed off, and you can see the amount of pressure because we're depressurizing this whole building, trying to draw air from the outside, and this is why we got the garage sealed off because garages aren't as important to be air leakage free but i think that this one is going to be pretty good though too other than your garage doors so you can kind of see so we're going we're moving to the c ring now all right that's a good thing right that's a good thing okay what would you expect this to hit based on you know what you see and what you've done in the past I would expect you to be in that neighborhood of one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, Dan, do you want to take a number two? What number do you expect? I'm gonna go 1.4. Okay. Okay. All right. Now I'll go 0. 0.9. 0. 0.9. All right. <laughs> we might have to add in that ad expense. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. We can okay. do that. We can do that. Um, you're at 400 and, yeah, you're tight. You're really tight. Uh, 
So we're at a building pressure, we're, there's our pressure. So we're basically at our minus 50 pascals. Okay. You're under 400 CFM. I don't know what that means, so. Um, we're both way off on our guess. Let's go, wait, that's a good thing. You're way lower. So maybe too tight? You're way, you've got an air exchanger. Can't be, yeah, okay. You got an air exchanger, you're good. You can feel the cold air right here. You want to see it? That's pretty cool. It's not much though. Mm -mm. Not much. Left where Randy was just touching was right the, here. Yeah, and the hinges. Yeah. Well, that's a thermal. That's a thermal transfer there. Mm -hmm. This one's too big for that. We got to get a little, the little smoker. Go. go ahead and do it there, Randy, on the door. Yeah. Look at that. <clears throat> wow. Pretty, go pretty eye-opening, man. This is really cool, really cool to do this. Yeah. What about, like, would you, you wouldn't be able to see through like a bathroom vent or anything. You wouldn't be able to yeah, see. Yeah, you like, can see. Can you? Yeah, usually you can. Yeah. Because this yeah, is you west. Can go upstairs, too, to see. Around yeah, I, didn't, any other I didn't see anything upstairs. Oh, really? Okay. So we got some... The trail? Yep. Yeah. That, so it's... I don't know if it's leaking down. Yeah, there, there are two ducts because you've got... Let's see, their bathroom is behind this bathroom. So their bathroom vent is over there. And then this, this is the bathroom vent for this. It's, it's not bad. It's not leaking. Not bad at all. Uh -uh. Wow. So Randy, can you like equate this blow door test to like how much air leakage we actually have? What is that? How does that equate? Yeah, so the size, the, the actual size of the hole, the software is telling me that you have 20.7 square inches. So that's at four pascals. So that's at natural building leakage without the blower door running. You have a four inch by five inch hole through this entire volume or this whole entire and, surface. And that's area. without covering bathroom vents, mm -hmm. that just the natural air leakage. Wow. Oh, that sounds good. It's, not, it's very good. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, for, just for fun, guys, we went ahead and we opened up the garage door. We had that sealed off. And Randy went ahead and calculated the entire building envelope. Because if you remember, we spray foamed the entire attic space. So that is part of our envelope as well as the garage. And what did we come up with, Randy? Uh, you, you dropped your score a little bit more. You're down to 0.34. So the thing to remember is we increased the volume mm -hmm. pretty exponential, right? I mean, all that roof space, all that garage space, but we didn't really add a ton of potential leak spots other than our garage doors. Correct. I'm assuming our garage doors are where we're getting the most leakage in the garage, but other than that, no windows, not many penetrations. So just wanted to pass that on, 0.34, probably still plenty tight. It's cool. Very tight. Awesome. Yeah, nice job. What's, what's the lowest ever recorded? I, I personally, I don't know. I know some people are 0.0. Five point zero four LG squared point zero six. Uh, Those are crazy. Basically, that's the little spaces around the blower door that that's you know, what's all these doing it. That's, yeah, that's, you know, that's your leakage. Uh, yeah. huh. I mean, so okay, the number like that. A guy like me is competitive. I want to make sure it's even better. But is there really any much to worry about? Like mm -hmm. when you talk about like maybe sealing around that one wire in that. Is that worth maybe the, the, okay, you said you could do cost savings, right? Yep. So, you know, I don't know what that little hole would do. So th this is estimating that all the leaks inside this house are gonna cost you $63 a year. Okay, so that's the number I was saying. So let's assume every leak was actually just that one wire. And my customer said, I want you to fix that. Okay, and it costs me two, three hours worth of work, plus travel, materials, mm -hmm. whatever. And really it doesn't save them two years worth of that cost, if that was all right there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, so let's say you did fix that and it cost them $500 to rip the wall apart, fix yep. that one thing. It, they're saving, chances are they probably aren't gonna get to zero, but they're gonna get close. Let's yep. say, that, that let's, like, like you said, it's let's still say nine that is, years of cost right it's there. It's nine years of cost. Yeah. Is it worth it? Yeah, interesting. Um, now, the one thing that you do wanna be aware of is that a dryer is gonna exhaust about 50, or 100 CFM, 100 to 150 CFM. This building at 50 pascals is exhausting, you know, at our test pressure, 377 CFM. So okay. you're ha nearly half that. So you're almost, you're half a blower door test every time they operate the dryer. Okay. How about that 1200 CFM uh, range hood? That's a problem. 
Yeah, every time that runs, that is going there, to well, they, they need makeup air. Yeah, the, well, number one, they won't hit 1200 CFM. There isn't enough yep. for them. You know, it, it may Unless only you open be, a window. Exactly. Or a door. Exactly. So with these numbers, not only are we seeing like energy efficiency potential with air leakage, mm -hmm. but it's giving me information to like tell like let's say my client, hey, mm -hmm. if you're going to run your 1200 CFM range hood and you want that, you know, exhaust, you have to open a window right. or put a. Uh, another air intake somewhere to get that back up. Yep, yep. And this also is telling us some CFM rates for balanced mechanical ventilation. So, you know, it's not just a matter of putting in an air exchanger, calling it good. That has to be sized for the load. You know, it, it takes into account the square footage of the house, the uh, um, number of bedrooms plus one. Um, all that number, all that's going to spit out a number of what you need to achieve for air, air exchange rates. Um, this is telling us also that the building's very tight. You can't use much of the natural air leakage as part of that calculation. You need a, a, an actual you, mechanical. You need that, yes. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Wow. I mean, th this was awesome, guys. I don't know. Hopefully, you guys learned something. Hopefully, like me, I didn't really know what a blower door test was going to tell me. Obviously, you've never done it on one of our jobs. So, big thank you to Randy and Dan for hooking this up. Um, is there anything you want to say? You know, obviously, Randy, I want people to know where they can find you. Um, I'm on Instagram, Northern yep. Built Pro. Yep. Um, I also write a blog, uh, www.northernbuilt.pro. Okay. Um, and contributing author on fine home building. Fine home building, I've building. seen you there. Yep. yep. And you do the round table with Dan, which we Dan do. is over here. Dan's from Rockwell. I don't know if, are you shy, Dan, or you're not wanting to get involved, or you're filming? <laughs> um, and Dan, what do you do, Dan, exactly? What is your role at so Rockwell? So I basically, nationwide, I work with builders, architects, installation contractors around the country, really just trying to educate and collaborate with builders like Randy, like you, Kyle. Well, let me say uh, this. There's no there. Rockwell in this job and Dan's still out here trying to help educate the community. So I think that's very important that even though you would love for me to use Rockwell on everything and we're going to be using it yeah, on a future yeah. job, but there's no Rockwell here. You still set this up and we're still trying to educate the community. And I think that's, what's awesome. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. It's all about educating the community, getting out there and really just trying to build better. So for me and you guys out there, I think the question has been answered though. Post frame is a very, easy way to make an efficient home because we mm -hmm. didn't do anything crazy here mm -hmm. you've done it without sheathing mm -hmm. with just a metal skin facade mm -hmm. and had a 0.38 mm -hmm. we just blew a 0.41 we did use sheathing but other than that i didn't really try we didn't use some crazy window or door package with super high energy it's pretty basic mm -hmm. that's pretty cool man it is awesome well okay. if you guys have any questions about this i will put their information down below so you can check that out Hit me up with any questions and we'll catch you guys on the next video.